Welcome into the rant, everybody. Kate McFarland, My Tulsa Taj World's Kirby. Bill Haston, Jacob Toby. What's Bill up? just came from church, so he's all dressed up, which I is came a good, from the gym. It's a good thing. Well, <laughs> you work out like that, Bill? <laughs> well, I mean, you get cleaned up and put your clothes back on. <laughs> we put your clothes back on. That's right. right. Man, it's good to see you. Uh, I know you've been battling the flu and all that, so good to see you again. And uh, it's good to be back in studio the flu one, is a very, one last time. The flu is a real deal, Jacob. It is. And would you say you were a veteran of it last year? Yeah, so. got me for a couple days last year. Yeah, so. it's, 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 uh, it's so the no closest fun. thing to death, I say. This is our last rant of the football season. Uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. This is a franchise that we bring back during the year as stories allow, but this is it for, and we wanted to put a bow on things. It didn't feel, didn't wait, last week it was Big Al and myself from Atlanta. It felt like we got to do one more of these things to, to finally put a, you know, put a bow on, on 2019, 2020. Uh, so, Jacob, get us started, man. We, we've had a lot going on out, we there, have, out there in Stillwater we have, this week. Well, Stillwater's been, been lit, as we say, been <laughs> lit. Tyler Wallace announced he's going to return for his senior season. Offensive coordinator Sean Gleason going to Rutgers to be the new offensive coordinator there. Casey Dunn reportedly was going to go to UNLV to be the new offensive coordinator there. He will now return to Stillwater and the role is somewhat uh, undiscussed at the moment. But Bill, what's next for OSU? And I think you'll mention a former OC's name as well after this. Yeah, well, I mean, you got two big ticket uh, uh, situations at OSU that uh, we should we will have clarity on one of them the Chuba Hubbard decision in about a week and then the coordinator hire uh, you don't know it, it, it in, in regard to a timeline in 2011 Whedon and Blackman right announced their staying yep. it was a full month later before they hired Todd Munkin they stayed without knowing who their coordinator would be that's something yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know how uh, the Todd Munkin possibility is a very, very real possibility for Oklahoma okay. State. It would be his third run at OSU. He was there to coach receivers in 02 through 04 for less miles. And then with Mike Gundy in 2011 and 12 had a sensational uh, run in those two years as the coordinator with tremendously different circumstances, had the best case scenario in 11, 12, a healthy Blackman and Whedon and a good enough defense, and they win the Big 12. In 12, they had three different starting quarterbacks. Caden, you remember yep. that. Uh, injuries really tore them up at quarterback, and yet it's the second most prolific offense in the history of the program. they were able to do that mm -hmm. season. So, uh, and, and you don't have to connect very many dots on this deal uh, with Munkin and Gundy, that yep. possibility, because Munkin and Mike Gundy are, are friends off the field. Probably Mike Gundy's best friend in the business. And um, so, after one year with the Cleveland Browns, um, you know, as far as I know, Todd is still under contract with the Browns, mm -hmm. still getting paid by the Browns, and that's why he's quiet right sure. now. But but I I think it's a better than coin toss of a chance. That better he's than coin come back. toss. I, oh yeah, I do. I think it's better than fifty percent. Tylen Wallace announces he's coming back, and that is such huge. It, news. It's massive. Uh, Chuba Hubbard, I, I have no idea at this point. I mean, everybody's tweeting out Canadian flags. Right. We assumed at, was in too. the moment. Uh, yeah, Munkin. That's crazy. Well. Isn't that? Because he can't it, talk, but he can do that. It's the first time Jacob he had tweeted anything so, yeah, in 13 months. Yeah. Wow. 13 months. All right. So we all assumed initially that that was he's coming back, and then you know the not a report. These I, I don't want to give credence to these Twitter things, but then the conjecture became, well, maybe it's just they were saying, hey, congrats on a great season, and eventually nah. he, I, I have no idea what's going on with you, but but the point is, there's I, if he comes back. And Munkin shows up, and Thailand is coming back. I, like, this has gone from one week ago. I heard from hardcore OSU people who were ready for Mike Gundy to start coming up with an exit plan. <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm not going to name names, but there are people, uh, right? There are hardcore OSU fans who who know a thing or two who thought that this thing had played itself out. Right. To now, like, the optimism could not be any higher if even. Two of these three things happen, right? Yeah. And one's already in the books with Thailand. If, if, if you're able to bring back Munkin and bring back Chuba and bring back Thailand, one of them's already happened. If one of the two happens, like this fan base is on fire. No, so, no, no question. It's, it's the most, you know, and, and to, uh, it is similar but different uh, after the Tyree kill punt return. Uh, you remember they had lost five in a row. Yep. They, they, they get the, they pop the big return against 
in Bedlam. They win the bowl game, and then they win 30 games the next uh -huh. three years. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it, everything turned really on one play. Well, t this is more like 2011 when you get Whedon and Blackman both to, to come back instead of going into the draft. And they hired Monk in perfect storm. Sure. After Dana had done a, an amazing job the year before of retooling the offense or rebooting everything offensively. So, Noah, um, you're right. I mean, it, it's just the most eventful, positive week I've ever seen for a team that, that lost a bowl game <laughs> no. and Bedlam. You know, came yes. in, they've lost their last two. Yeah. And, yet, and yet the whole spirit of, of everything around OSU football right now just seems – refreshed and in a way better place. Final thing on this, but because, you know, you were here for the two years of Munkin, um, and you just mentioned 2012, how they went through multiple quarterbacks, and right. still the numbers were incredible. Uh, let, let's say Chuba goes to the NFL, because in my mind that still probably makes the most sense for any running back who's, who's done what he's done uh, in his career already. Let's say he leaves, they get Munkin, Tylen Wallace comes back, we know Spencer Sanders is, and, and the talent he has. Munkin with Spencer Sanders, how do you see that thing playing out? And how do you see the offense being maybe a little bit different than it was this year? Well, I mean. I don't, I what don't, can Munkin bring to the table well, that it, wasn't in that room this year? I don't know what they're going to look like at tailback if they don't have Chuba. You That's know what right. I mean? L.D. Bell. All right. They, you had a 1,600-yard guy in 2010 uh, in Kendall Hunter. He's gone. Joseph Randall steps in as a 1,200-yard guy. But I don't think Joe Randall's in that, walking through that door. No, I don't either. Uh, is is the, the glass kid they signed last right, year, the four-star right. guy from Houston, is he ready to get involved now? I, I don't potential. know. We'll see. Uh, but um, I, I do remember that Munkin was, like Dana, targeted Blackman a ton. Uh -huh. I mean, like 75% of the throws, Blackman was the targeted guy. And I would presume that Wallace would be that, sure. that type of guy, too. So, um, I, just, I just know that Munkin uh, was a brilliant guy uh, when things were clean in, with regard to injuries, yeah. they were great. And when things were jacked up because of injuries, they were still really yeah. good. They, they, they were averaged 450 yards a game with three different starting quarterbacks. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, I, I don't know what it's going to look like because I don't know whether Chuba's coming back. If you tell me Chuba's coming back, they're sure. fully loaded and they're top three in the Big 12 going into the season next year. So. We all hope it's going to happen because Munkin was so great with the media and obviously the, was, the results on the field were incredible. Mm -hmm. The offensive line play was different back then than what it's been since, really. It did take a step forward this year, but look, it, any, any offensive coordinator uh, has to get the ball into his, the hands of his best players. You just mentioned that with Blackman. He would probably do that with Tylen. Mm -hmm. And the O-line play has got to be good if yeah. you're going to be any good. No question. Um, you know. No, that, that's uh, – I don't know if they're ready to take that kind of jump. Now, do you, we haven't even mentioned the OSU defense, which second half of the season exactly. was tremendous. Really good. Yeah, really, really good. Kyle Porter of Pistols Firing has pointed out, I think their final six or seven games – held the opposition well below, or at least below, and usually well below their season average, uh, scoring, I don't know if it was yardage as well, but scoring, I mean, that's what a defense is asked to do. Defense was really good down the stretch is the point, and they bring back everybody but A.J. Green yeah. for the most part. That's Mike right. Mike Scott maybe as well. So, uh, look, I, and, I and think And not just Jim the Knowles, starters, but they got really good backups. Yeah, that's right. With a lot of game experience. That's right. And they're all back. So, Mike Gundy, right after that lost A&M, said he could not have – he was so excited yeah. uh, for next season. And I think, you know, fans now yeah. I have, have joined him in that. that that's what I wrote while. today, uh, Caden, that, that uh, uh, even without knowing yet what, whether you have Chuba Hubbard, you know you got that defense coming yeah. back. Uh, final six games of the year. All right, so they, get, they give up 45 and almost 600 yards against Texas Tech. They give up 45 and almost 600 yards against Baylor, or 550. Yeah. And, and then from that point, they gave up 23 points a game and 389 yards a game. Yep. So, um, I think Jim Knowles has turned the corner with his guys, and the arrow is straight up for the defense. Yep. And the offense is, you know, presuming uh, Sanders takes a, uh, continues to progress nicely and this thumb thing isn't a lingering deal, uh, OSU, with a manageable schedule, Sure. Uh, 2020 could be really interesting for Oklahoma State. And the next week or two should be interesting for Oklahoma State. Uh, the next few days, for sure. For sure. All right, boys, let's move on. Oklahoma suffering, really, Lincoln Riley, his first major blowout of his career at OU. Caden, I go to you. What 
sort of effect, any lasting effect will this have on the program? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, I'm going to say no because I think of this season as a one-off. They went out and got Jalen Hurts as a bridge from, from Baker and Kyler to Spencer Rattler, who's the future at quarterback. Uh, he, he did a fine job, especially early in the year, of, of making us believe that this offense uh, was humming along just like it has the last couple of years. Um, you know, and they win the Big 12 for a fifth straight time and they make the college football playoff. It, to me, when you have Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch teamed up going forward, OU has a lot of things figured out. Right? Like, are they ready to win the national championship next year with a quarterback as young as Rattler is going to be? Probably not, but I think they continue to compete for it. And I think very soon, maybe two years from now, you will have circled, all right, this is, this is a great shot for OU. This, this will be the best chance they've had in who, you know, who knows how many years to actually go win a national title. I expect this program to keep humming, uh, keep being the favorite and probably winning Big 12 titles, keep knocking on the door in the college football playoff. I expect all of that. But in the back of my mind, I re you say the words 55 to 19 in this state, and an entire state knows hmm. the game you're talking about. The Bob Stoops OU program, even though they played for a national title once again in 2008, never did regain the same swagger it had for that five-year period um, leading up to the USC loss after the USC loss. There was just something about that. And I do wonder, I'm, I'm wondering aloud here now, not saying this is the case, I just stated I think Lincoln Riley, Alex Grinch are going to be fine. I think they're recruiting in a way OU's fine. But I do wonder if the players within that program Ha they had it happen to them. They experienced it. You go through a loss like that and begin to question, well, just how close are we? Or how far away are we? I, I, I just wonder. I just You lose like they lost to LSU, and that was as resounding as a loss can possibly be. And I just wonder if it, if, you know, it, it doesn't shake a team's confidence at least a little bit. Of course it does, except that the guys who are going to win OU, uh, who, the guys who are going to win OU's next national title are like in the eighth grade right now. <laughs> So, you know, and, and they're not going to remember this. I mean, Jacob, do you think... Did lose a quarterback this week for the class of 2021, like the number one kid in the country yeah. out of Georgia. Okay, well, not saying this game did it. He was going to be saying, on the bench for three years anyway. Well, hey, maybe. I mean, I, I just, I don't know that I believe. Now, you can point at... 55-19 and what happened after. But uh -huh. what happened after is they had a five-star quarterback who got in some trouble Good and point. got kicked out of the program. So well, you, you don't know how that Spencer might have. Spencer Rattler was in trouble once upon a time in high school. Just, you know. Spencer Rattler didn't, didn't get kicked out. Keep our out nose clean. Years. No, good point. Good day. That, I, I should have brought that up. No, no, but, same, but, not the same uh, kid. But, you know, I mean, three years later, I mean, at, at, at when, when uh, uh, Southern Cal uh, smoked Oklahoma, uh, what was uh, Sam Bradford was playing golf and football at good PC point. North. No, good I mean, point. Yep. And I don't think it got in his head. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I it just didn't seem to. No. And no, and, no, and you know, so it, but you're right. I mean, that that 2000 through 04 uh, run at OU was unbelievable. Yes. Uh, the mystique, the trick plays, mm -hmm. the success rate. I mean, they should have won it all in 03. Yeah. No doubt about it. That, that was his best team. Uh, that was Bob's best team was 03. So I, I just don't know that I'm buying that this uh, uh, Peach Bowl debacle yeah. is going to be a, uh, an albatross I, or, or, or result in them, a bunch of guys needing, uh, you know, extensive therapy. I, I agree. I, I think this season was a one-off, and I, I, I think they'll be just fine moving forward. But and I, nothing it, lasts, that's what the rant's for. Wanted nothing to lasts forever, Caden. There was a time in my football watching life that I thought, Florida State would be great forever. Sure. I thought the Miami Hurricanes would win every national championship yep. for 25 years. I thought Nebraska would be great forever. Nothing lasts forever. Clemson's going to come back to earth after Tre at Trevor point, Lawrence goes Bama's to the NFL. Bama's already come back to earth. Uh, Bama's at a little bit of a tipping point right now, Here, Jacob. Here's the You're scary right. thing with Clemson. Um, they've won two national titles, and they're one game away from making it three with recruiting classes kind of nothing like what they're bringing in currently. I mean, it, if Dabo stays, I, I think they're going to lose their offensive coordinators. I don't know about Venables and when he may go, but it does seem like Clemson may, may be closer to the start of something than the end. Uh, but what you say is right. Oh, no, I love forever. Clemson. That's exactly right. And look, LSU looked, I, I don't know how much better, how, how wide can my arms go? They looked this much better than Oklahoma uh, last week in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But Joe Burrow is going to go to the NFL, mm -hmm. and that changes a whole lot. I mean, you, what did you tell me? He looked like Joe Montana? Joe Burrow did look like – I mean, 
A it was unbelievable. Yeah, a bigger mm -hmm. Joe Montana. The, the accuracy with which this kid was able to throw on the run was really good defense from OU on some of those plays. It, it didn't matter. So you remove him from the situation and mm -hmm. things change a it's lot. It's just funny how athletes crest in their development or really take their biggest step in their development, Jacob, because like LeBron James was probably could have played in the NBA when he was 16. Really? Probably. Okay. And then Joe Burrow is a, is a nice prospect yeah. who at the age of 20, 21, yep. takes this massive leap. And, and I, I think he's destined to be, uh, now I, I'm hopeful that he doesn't get in a, in a just a miserable. He's going to Cincinnati. He's, going to Cincinnati. Well, he's, going, he's on a Cincinnati. Pretty bad. Well, it's bad right now. Yeah. He's on a Cincinnati. Can, can he and, can and he Zach Taylor and that organization elevate I, out of that quagmire they're in. I don't know, but but I hope he's not a guy who like gets uh, like David Card to no. death and sacked to death and just chewed to sure. pieces and would never see what he should have been That's or right. could be. But I think he's, he's fantastic. You know, he's got NFL accuracy without a doubt. All right, for sure. For All right, boys. You know, it's uh, it's 2020, right? Not 2019 anymore. We're in a new year, so that means we got to look back at 2019. Caden and I did our top green country stories and top Oklahoma sports stories on Christmas Eve a couple weeks ago. So, Bill, maybe your biggest sports story in the state of Oklahoma in 2019 and some of the other honorable mentions. Well, I don't know that it would resonate uh, statewide as it should, uh, but certainly to me the number one story of the year was Alan Trimble's passing. Um, and it's just been, it's just been a, a terrible three and a half years. And, um, you know, we, we've committed a lot of time on the rant to, talking about Allen. Uh, yeah. but, but still, I mean, there's uh, – even though you saw him, golly, what, three weeks or so before he passed, mm -hmm. and, and I saw that video, and it was breathtaking and heartbreaking and just – so, yeah, I mean, Allen Trimble, are you, are you kidding me? I mean, just, just a, a – uh, he's not a Mount Rushmore guy. He's just a standalone sure. uh, legend of a coach. Sure. Uh, but otherwise, for the year, I mean, the superstar era ends with the yep. Thunder. Yep. Uh, you, you've, you've had all-stars and scoring champions and, and uh, MVPs in Oklahoma City for most of the decade. And now... Yeah. It's different. It's fun. No, it's better. <laughs> it's better. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, I do. Bill. The record's Bill. very close. No, Last I, year, right better. now. No, I, I'm not talking... I'm not, I, I'm not suggesting they're going to uh, contend... For no, anything beyond the seventh seed, and they're not going to get out of the first round. Talking about entertainment problem. value. Uh, entertainment value. I'm entertained by uh, I like, going like, to the like and Western Conference Finals, if you ask me. But well, okay, okay. So you're comparing two different things. No, with and Kevin I, I'm Durant. Entertained. I'm entertained by that with, stuff. With Kevin Durant, absolutely. I'm entertained. And what we've had the last couple of it's years, a nice little team. the Westbrook PG thing. This has been more fun so far. Well, yeah. sorry, Jay Gilders no, no. I, I, do his thing I like to see an extra pass. I like mm. to see. Good ball. Uh, the the Chris Paul play where he bought suits for everybody. Yeah. What an unbelievable bonding Did play ever do that was. Did he ever do that? No. No. No, and I've said it on the animal and I've written it and I'm gonna write about the Thunder next week and kinda harken back to the Kathy Taylor, David Stern, mm. uh, all the politics that went in to get yeah. this team into Oklahoma anyway, but but I for since Durant left, the whole organization, Jacob, has walked on eggshells around Russell to make sure Just Russell's make sure happy. Yeah. yeah. And now uh, Chris Paul's buy-in on this whole deal has been unbelievable. It has. Unbelievable. And I'm almost to the point where, like, I'll take him at 34 at that money with what he's providing right now. Yeah. It ain't my money. But I'm just saying uh, I'm not anxious to see him go. Not very long ago, Chris Paul was the best – point guard in this league, at least in the way we used to think of traditional point guards, mm -hmm. right? And the league has transformed. And now everybody has just a mutant of some kind at, at the point guard position. And Russell Westbrook was That's right. like the king mutant, right? I mean, just different than we have ever seen athletically at the point guard position. Darnell Mayberry, who used to cover the Thunder on, on the beat for the Oklahoman, used to get into arguments with people all the time about who was better, Chris Paul or Russell Westbrook, and he always maintained it was Paul, mm -hmm. um, just as a player, and said if Paul was here working with Durant, like that would be the good stuff. That would take this team to another level. And, that you know, Westbrook got the better of Paul in I, I think it was the 2016 NBA playoffs, and, and he kind of relished those moments. There, there were times, certainly in some of the biggest games, 
where Westbrook's athleticism was able to overcome everything Paul brings to the table. Um, that said, watching this guy night in, night out, I appreciate him in a way that I didn't even then, as great as I knew he was. And at this advanced age, it's, it's incredible to me how smart he is. And if you could just somehow combine the athleticism of Westbrook and the intelligence of Paul, like, I mean, then you would have, like, now we're talking about greatest point guard of all time. That's like, uh, that's Magic Johnson stuff. Um, it's crazy that we've had both, but it's so fitting for the Oklahoma City Thunder decade and franchise mm -hmm. that we've had both but separately. And we won't get a title out of either one because that kind of, that's, we the number of superstars we have had play in this little state mm -hmm. is mind-blowing. Kevin is. Durant is an all-timer. Russell Westbrook will have his place, you know, in the Hall of Fame and kind of all-time lore uh, with the triple-double stuff. Chris Paul, best point guard in the league for several years. Paul George as a two-way player, about as good as a on and on. And Melo, we had him James after. Hardy. James Harden. James Exactly. It's Girl Adipo. Un Unbelievable the talent that's played mm -hmm. in this state, but we we never were able to put it all together. You know, should have kept hard longer, and then maybe you would have seen. But um, that 30 for 30 will be the 30 for 30 to top all 30 for 30. Absolutely. Except maybe this one that's coming the Michael out Jordan the one in June. Oh, that no, uh, this no, I, this one's going to be unbelievable. I can't wait for the Jordan no. documentary. Uh, but this this season though, Jacob has been like three chapters for the Thunder, and I know we're we're not even halfway yet. But they weren't very good for about. Close to the first month. It took them a little bit. They weren't very good. But at about the 20-game mark, they got good enough uh, to, to hang with anybody. And, and then they started figuring out and, and winning now and then. And now, last 18 games, they got the be I think they have the best record in the NBA over these last 18 or so. And did you see what they did at Cleveland? They just went in there like grown men yeah. and handled their business and built a lead. You, you remember how the Thunder – invariably uh, these last couple of years would blow leads, blow leads. And, and not only did this, is this team. Oh, they're really good in the clutch. Oh my gosh. And Shea Gilgis, Alexander. Chris Paul's is, the best clutch player in the league right now. He is. Statistically, Statistically. that's exactly right. Uh, 50, but over 50, I'm just wondering if, if Russell Westbrook burns rocket fuel, right? And, and Chris Paul's like a Prius. I mean, Chris Paul may age a lot more gracefully and effectively uh, at sure. 34, I mean, he may be better at 37 than Russell may be at 33 sure. or 34. Uh, full disclosure, we're taping this about two hours before it's actually going to air. Uh, watch us go to air with this thing, and they've traded away Gallinari and Adams well, or I was something. Just gonna... <laughs> Quickly, though, Bill. Bill goes up and smoke like Bill, that. Thursday, Russell Westbrook does return. What do you expect from that? Oh, no. it'll be a love fest. I mean, and, and deservedly. I mean, it's I'm cool with all of that. I just don't miss his, his – uh, I mean – you know, what he it, takes off the table. He brings, as Bill Simmons says, he brings a lot to the table. He takes a lot off no, as well. It, it just, it's, I've enjoyed this season 10 times more than I expected to. And, and there'll be a lot of love for him, and it'll be the antithesis of the whole cupcake thing with Durant mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And it'll be all of that. And I can't wait to go to the game. Yeah. Uh, Same. So, all right, so if you were to spitball a top five stories from this year. Yeah, Tremble, yeah, yeah, I, I got off track. Uh, uh, Jalen Hurts coming to town? Absolutely. That's top five for you, you for can, sure. It overwhelmed the OU storyline. It was yeah. the storyline at OU. Yeah. Uh, that plus the defense uh, taking a big step. Sure. It, it didn't take the kind of step to get you. Uh, yeah, it didn't take as big a step as we thought <laughs> uh, well, upon further review. But, yeah, no, it was, it was a big but step. It wasn't even reasonable to, to believe That's that right. you could get to a playoff. No. Winning defense, a no. playoff game winning That's defense right. in, in, with the same personnel That's in right. that amount of time. Uh -huh. uh, so I thought Grinch had a great year. Yeah. Uh, Westbrook. Uh, T. Boone. Boone Pickens. As well. uh, Boone Pickens' uh, uh, impact on Oklahoma State can't be overstated. Sure. It's impossible. He changed that whole school. Chuba running for 2,000. How close Big would time. that be to a top five on, on your list? Oh, my gosh. Well, it, was, it was eight or nine in the Tulsa one. Oh, no. It's, it's yeah. It's. Well, it, that, that was more than just Bill voting. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, no, I know. That, was, um, I, that would be up there for sure. Uh, I, and I can't remember when we did ours. That made our top six, right? Maybe yeah, not our made, top five. Yeah, yours, top it was yours, yeah. But, um, I mean, are we so jaded now that we can't r throw Kyler Murray going first overall? Uh, Look, that was a huge draft not night. jaded, but, I mean, that, it, it's just unbelievable. I, it, you know, that's a that's a, a story that will age unbelievably well, too. Yeah. That, that you had two transfer quarterbacks come in, 
lead them to the playoff, lead them to Big 12 championships and win the Heisman sure. and go number one in the draft back to back. That's nuts. It is. And it'll and be how, nuts when we talk about it 20 years how from about, now. How, if you combine the Josh Jacobs story, a kid from right here in Tulsa and yeah. his background, I, I, we know that story. With Kyler going number one, has there ever been a draft night quite like that for <laughs> at least folks here in Tulsa? I mean, you combine those two and draft night 2019, that's pushing top five of yeah. all the sports stories, you know, not just in green country, but right. the state. I mean, incredible. And oh, then it, for Josh Jacobs to run for 1,100 yards in 13 games in his rookie season, wow. Yeah, big time. No, it, was, it, was, it, was a, uh, it wasn't an epic year with regard to big stories. I mean, like, not, not, 1994 will never be touched in Oklahoma. Yeah, and, and that would be another two-hour rant if I start r- rolling off all that stuff, Jacob. But that's that's the biggest, that's the longest list of huge stories uh, for a state. We didn't even have the Thunder then. I mean, mm-hmm. that was way before uh, we were a major league state, so to speak. But uh, it was a heck of a year and a heck it, of a decade for sure. But, oh yeah, in a lot no, of ways. the decade was crazy. And I mean, the, I, I wrote a column about the decade to kind of review the uh-huh. decade a little bit, and it, it just to me the the overwhelmingly the 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 two most jaw-dropping, you got to be kidding me moments were uh, June 7 of 17. Well, let's let me go chronolo- chronologically. Durant yeah. on July 4, 2016. I'm out of here, and then June 7, 17. Yeah. Bob Stoops retires. Yeah. Um, and you know the crazy thing is, I think in terms of shock, because we had talked about Durant for months, um, the weight of that was greater in part because Stoops just puts in Riley and they keep on winning, right? But uh, the shock for Stoops, I mean, none of us had Mm -hmm. any idea. So I was actually more shocked by the Stoops news. I kind of half expected, I don't know about the Warriors, but I half expected KD to go somewhere else. It just felt like maybe he was going to graduate. It just, time in his life, and for some reason that seemed right. Stoops, I had mono. And my phone just starts blowing up and I had to do, you know, phone interviews with the, you know, Channel 2 because uh, I couldn't leave the house. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I, I always thought that Kevin Durant would never leave Oklahoma City, that Kevin Durant would get a percentage of the ownership, Jacob. Mm, and that's not happening. Hey, he, he had, <laughs> well, no. He had just been inducted into the Oklahoma Hall yeah. of Fame like eight months before that. Not the Sports Hall of Fame, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. We could take so, that one back. Bill, does hey, he get a, st- does he get a statue at some point? Does Kevin mm-hmm. get a statue at the at the arena? At some point, yeah. No, hell no. No, if, if Jimmy <laughs> if Jimmy Johnson <laughs> can't how quick does Russell get one? If Jimmy Johnson can't get in the Dallas Cowboy Ring of Honor, Kevin Durant's not going to get a statue at Chesapeake. Right. Uh, Are you gonna give Westbrook one? I don't know. Does he get one if he does? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how they. I don't know. I've never really heard any talk about monuments or yeah, what they're thinking in that regard. Maybe the coolest statue I've ever seen. We just saw last week. They have Dominique Wilkins in mid. Yeah. Slam mm-hmm. uh, right outside State Farm Arena in Atlanta. That's yeah. That's pretty good. That's cool. Yeah. Do it, you know, mid windmill. I think uh, <laughs> I think the more pressing statue conversation around here is Barry Sanders. Yes. But uh, Team Boone's true. going up first. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, somehow probably you need to commemorate this decade of Thunder basketball somehow. Uh, outside the arena, you know, with monuments yeah. of some sort, but I don't know that it needs to be just a Kevin sure. statue. Good point. Maybe, the maybe three of them jumping, leaping. Well, like just, that. just do the picture. Yeah, do the picture. Durant, put it in statue. Westbrook, Harden, maybe Serge. You know what I mean? Or, or just some sort of collection of guys Collison. to commemorate. Heck, Nick Collison. Co- he got his course. jersey retired. Well, yeah, Collison would be a guy who would be in that group. But some sort of uh, uh, of, of a multi-guy statue yep. cluster. All right. Something. Uh, well, that does it for the rant this season. But we're going to have uh, Bill back as often as he'll let us bring him back. If news discuss breaks, the, Bill the comes biggest in. sporting events here in Oklahoma. So we're fired up about 2020. Yeah. Fired up just about OSU football this week and maybe the next couple weeks to see how that shakes out. I'm Bill, fired up about college basketball. I watched, are you really? Hey, I watched TU Friday night. Yeah, you did. Well, so they've did got I. me a little fired up. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Uh, this is the most impressed I've been by TU in a while. A 70 wild. to 44 over Temple. You saw what I saw, Jacob. Uh, the guard play was yeah. outstanding. The the defense was outstanding. All right, Frank Hay, just keep doing that. Just <laughs> just stack the defense. It was the it was yeah, really the stack it up. And Jariah Horn's the most improved player I think yes, I've seen in the country this year. I'm a story him, on that tonight. I've, I've seen impressive okay. wins from TU and AAC play. In fact, I think every year Frank's been the coach. They've gone on a run 
in conference play. So well, you don't go on a run. That just just be be consistent. tough and because yeah. I've seen I've seen Houston play multiple times. I've seen a lot of AAC basketball. Right, Tulsa. That Tulsa team against Temple could win a lot of games in the league. All right, All right. basketball season, baby. Yep. You ready for it? Yep. Caden, you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> He's still sad. He's still sad. There's no more football. He's gonna watch some bowl I know. game. I'm gonna bowl go game back tomorrow. Watch that bowl. Yeah, Miami, Ohio, and oh, whoever La Louisiana Lafayette. Hey, thanks to our great sponsor, Jack C. Yes. Jacob, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Caden. My pleasure. Hey, that does it. See ya.